It is no more I that doeth it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Because of Christ inside, we love the law. We want to honor God. We want to honor him with our lives. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my mem members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Who's going to deliver us? I thank God through Jesus Christ, my Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God with the flesh, the law of sin. And he goes right down into chapter 8 and says, There is now therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Now, I think in the original, it's period. There is no condemnation. Once Christ and the blood has been applied to you, that is gone. That is gone forever. Not just for today, not just till the next time you sin and come short, but it's gone forever. God wants us to come to this place. I thank God through Jesus Christ, my Lord. And not be easily beset, because if you read the next verse over here in, in uh, uh, chapter 12, it says, it says, let us lay aside the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. How? Looking unto Jesus. <laughs> Looking unto Jesus. It's Jesus that's going to complete the work. It's Jesus that's promised to, to complete the work that he started in us unto the day of, of his coming and his appearing. I'm going to tell you, God wants us not to be beset by, by the sin, that, that sin that easily besets you. I believe, like I said, I believe God's going to deliver us, but it's going to be him, and he's going to do it in his time. And what do we live by? We live by the hope that he's going to do it. We live by the faith of Jesus Christ that he gave us. And Paul said, I frustrate not the grace of, of God. You know, you know how you frustrate it? Is when you don't agree with it. When grace is given, it's taken care of. We frustrate it because we think we still got to do something. We still got to overcome. We still, we've messed up. Instead of just accepting the peace and the grace and the love of, of God to us through Jesus Christ, through the blood that was shed, it is done, beloved. It is done, and it is finished. God wants us to be free this morning. He wants us to be free, to rejoice. Now, I'm not saying that, that you know, um, like I said, we grieve the Holy Ghost, and there's something that goes on when you do that. But I'm going to tell you, we don't have to live there. We don't have to dwell there. We can point the devil to the cross. When he comes to condemn us and to bring us down, God wants us to be free. He wants us to be a happy, rejoicing people in him. He's worthy of praise. He's worthy of our praise this morning. We're called, as Paul said in Timothy, to fight the good fight of faith. That's a pretty good description of the Christian life. It has everything to do with faith and unbelief. Uh, I'll refer to the scripture I've used a number of times in the past in Galatians, where Paul says, you received the Spirit. How did you receive the Spirit? Was it by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? And, of course, we know the answer. It has nothing to do with what we do. It has everything to do with believing something that God has promised, and as a result of believing that, we receive the fruit of that promise. And that is the heart of everything, and it, even as it is the way we enter into the Christian life, it has to do with every aspect of our living for God thereafter. It's all about believing the provision of God. Now, do we believe, at least intellectually, that God has made every provision? Is there something that he has about salvation that he has left up to us and our ability? And if we fail, everything falls apart. No, he's made provision for everything. Now, our problems come when we do experience failure. And uh, I'm as familiar with it as anybody in here. Uh, and it's something we all have to deal with. And I believe this is very, very timely. I appreciate it so much because God does want us to run with freedom. Uh, but, but the problem is, now I was thinking about this. So Satan, Satan attacks our faith. That's what, that's what I was getting to. 
This is the target of Satan. Here's God says something, and if we believe it, he has really got no chance. If we don't believe it, then there's a wedge that he can get in. And uh, so let's go back to the Garden of Eden. What, how did Satan attack Eve? Yea, hath God said? How does he attack you when you fail? Yea, hath God said? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Did God really say that? What does condemnation mean? Think about what condemnation means. It doesn't mean you, you, you dirty so-and-so. Condemnation has to do with God rejecting somebody and ultimately casting them into hell. It is a, it is a, it's actually a legal thing. You, you're brought before the bar of God's justice, and God says, you're guilty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what condemnation is. How can Satan say of, of someone who has put their trust in what Jesus did, you're condemned because of what you did? It's, complete, it's a complete denial of what Jesus did. <laughs> Think about it. And so anything that causes us, as Ron as, and others have said, to withdraw ourselves and to sort of hold back is basically going along for that period of time with what Satan has said. Yea, has God really said? Yeah, I know up to this point he's forgiven you, but now you've done it again. Yea, hath God said? And that's where we need to be able to rise up and say, yes, God has said. And Jesus has done, it's not just an empty promise, it's not just something that has no basis in reality, it is based upon something that happened. It is based upon a historical provision that God has made through Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed on that cross. You know, the natural man sees no relevance to his life with what Jesus did with, with the death of, of someone who was condemned for, as a religious rabble-rouser 2,000 years ago. What does that have to do with me? It has everything to do with me because he went to that cross to pay the penalty, of the, to die the death that I should have died. It was his life for mine. Oh, praise God. Praise God for what he did because he saw us helpless, unable to erase our sins, unable to live for God, unable to live up to the law. I mean, you know, when God shows us that, it's, it is to bring us to, to him, but I'll tell you, it's a humbling thing. It's a humbling we need. We are so full of self-confidence that is unwarranted. We need to come to a place daily where we say, Lord, I need you. You are my only hope. And I simply, I, my faith is fixed not upon my ability to do anything. It's fixed upon your living in me.